So prior to filing the bankruptcy, the debtor may have been involved in all sorts of legal battles in the, well, since I'm in California, the California Superior Court, although it could be in the Federal District Court as well. And those lawsuits are stayed as soon as the debtor files the Chapter 11 petition. Stay, by the way, in uh, law says stop. So those lawsuits are stayed. Now, uh, that's because the filing of the petition triggers something called the automatic stay. And in fact, the debtor doesn't have to do anything else. Just filing the petition triggers the stay, which is why it's called the automatic stay. Sometimes a creditor will say, well, you know, I've been prosecuting this lawsuit for a couple of years. I'd like to at least get a resolution so that I have a sum certain that I want paid to me through the Chapter 11 plan. So the creditor can ask the judge to lift the automatic stay so that it can return to the California Superior Court to uh, prosecute that lawsuit to an end. That can complicate getting the plan confirmed because if we don't have a sum certain on that particular debt, and especially if it's one of the larger debts or potentially one of the larger debts, it's hard to craft a plan that deals with all the debts when there's this big unknown. So that's certainly one legal consideration that can be a problem. Sometimes, instead of having the stay lifted and the creditor returning to the California uh, Superior Court, the creditor will initiate a lawsuit in the bankruptcy court. In bankruptcy, we refer to lawsuits as adversary proceedings. And there, the creditor may want to uh, litigate before the bankruptcy judge um, for whatever reason, there are tactical reasons why someone might want to litigate in the bankruptcy court as opposed to a state court. Um, generally, in bankruptcy, you don't get a jury trial. They're as rare as hen's teeth in bankruptcy. At least theoretically, they're possible, but they just never really take place. But then maybe there's a jury trial in the California Superior Court. If the creditor thinks that... Uh, uh, since a jury is such a crapshoot of people, you have no idea whether you get a panel of idiots or geniuses or a mix. Um, the creditor might decide, you know, I think I'd like the bankruptcy judge to rule on this one. In any event, if it's a significant claim that's at stake, well, that can hamper coming up with a, a plan a, at all. Because let's say we've got a ten, potentially a $10 million claim here. But if the creditor loses, maybe it's going to be 500000 Who's to know? Well, how do you come up with a plan of reorganization when you have no idea what this claim is going to be? So that really um, does put uh, a crimp on being able to come up with a decent Chapter 11 plan. Uh, there is, of course, the issue of whether or not you're uh, propounding a plan that's legal, uh, and uh, the big area these days is over cannabis production, because under federal law, uh, marijuana is a controlled substance and it's illegal. But under California law, it's perfectly legal. People can uh, use recreational marijuana. There are no problems with that. Well, my own feeling is maybe there are personal problems. I never touch the stuff myself, but that's uh, those people's uh, business, what they do or don't do with their bodies. In any event, the Office of the United States Trustee has taken the position that uh, a business that has a connection to marijuana uh, is illegal under federal law and therefore cannot propound a plan. And there's been a fair amount of case law on this. Um, how attenuated the umbilical cord connecting the business to marijuana uh, income is, is at the heart of a lot of those disputes. But anyway, there is a legal consideration that pits state law against federal law. State law says, hey, it's perfectly legal. Federal law says, uh-uh, and bankruptcy is all federal law. So the bankruptcy code does say that uh, the judge cannot confirm a plan uh, that has provisions that are forbidden by law. And so there is another legal consideration that can affect the confirmation or non-confirmation of a plan. In fact, there have been cases involving marijuana dispensaries or marijuana farming uh, projects that simply were dismissed because the U.S. trustee was able to convince the judge 
this is not a, a case that can proceed legally. Now, can there be others? Certainly. Um, one thing that has come up in a, a couple of cases I've dealt with are employer-employee suits. So you've got the employer who, um, for a long time, let's say, had people working for it who were classified as independent contractors. Well, an independent contractor uh, doesn't get benefits unless the creditor is uh, or the uh, employer is particularly generous. And uh, the independent contractor has to pay his or her own taxes directly to the taxing authority. There are no deductions from the paychecks. And there are also issues on whether or not the independent contractor is entitled to overtime. Well, because of changes in California law and a uh, California Supreme Court decision a couple of years back, it's now unclear exactly how many people working can be considered independent contractors. They may now be viewed as employees. And so there have been lawsuits involving these people who were originally thought of as independent contractors who say, well, now I've been an employee all along. You owe me back overtime. You owe me back benefits. And uh, so the uh, debtor decides, you know, the better part of wisdom might be to file a bankruptcy case. Well, those uh, lawsuits are stayed uh, because of the automatic stay, but now uh, those um, employees or former independent contractors may ask the judge to lift the stay uh, so that they can prosecute their actions in the California Superior Court, or maybe they'll prosecute that in the bankruptcy court. And that could translate into a lot of money involved. So this is a more specific example of what I was just talking about with creditors uh, having lawsuits pending. So there's another legal thing that can come up that can affect confirmation. And finally, one of the things that's been in the news a fair amount because of the Purdue Pharma uh, uh, Chapter 11 is the idea of uh, liability releases. So uh, when a debtor files uh, a Chapter 11, at, uh, if it's a business debtor, once the plan is confirmed, the order confirming the plan also discharges the debtor of all debts. Now, the debtor, of course, still has to make the plan payments, but... At that point, the debtor gets a discharge. With an individual Chapter 11, uh, as a side note, the debtor does not get a discharge at confirmation. Instead, the debtor has to make the plan payments, and at the completion of the plan, then the debtor can put in an application to get a discharge. Well, the goal here is to discharge the debtor of the debtor's liabilities. But there may be other folks involved who have liabilities. Do, can a plan make provision to get rid of those personal liabilities on the parts, let's say, of the owners? So the Sackler family in the Purdue case uh, wanted to uh, have uh, personal uh, releases of their liabilities. Can the plan say, okay, um, those uh, uh, releases uh, go forward, and uh, now the, the principals have no personal liability. And that's a topic of uh, some uh, litigation. It's a hot topic right now, and that's certainly something that is legal, uh, a legal question uh, that can affect confirmation uh, because you don't want to have too uh, broad a release of liability that just covers everybody and his brother who's been uh, even tangentially connected to the debtor. So yet another legal consideration that can create problems in confirmation. There are others, but the idea here wasn't to get into a detailed disquisition on uh, all the possible legal considerations in getting a Chapter 11 plan confirmed, but rather just to sort of give a little bit of a flavor of what's all uh, what's involved.